This is possibly the most evil of the many lies that are told about men and domestic violence. For example, take this headline from the Washington Post, December 2004. It sounds awful, doesn't it? The terrible danger that pregnant women are in. And there are more headlines like this. Newsnight in the UK also covered the story. What's the greatest cause of death of pregnant women in the United States? Complications caused by their pregnancy, cancer, road crashes? It's not any of these, it's murder. Two recent high-profile homicides have caught the attention of the American public for precisely that reason. Both the victims were pregnant and their deaths are part of a pattern of the ultimate in violent spousal abuse. But when you read the article and do just a small amount of research into the figures, you find out that a pregnant woman in America is actually three times safer than the average American. A pregnant woman has a 1 in 54,000 chance of being murdered, while the average American has a 1 in 17,000 chance of being murdered. So why isn't that the happy headline? The headline, Many New York Expectant Mothers Die Violent Deaths, could be replaced with Many New York Expectant Fathers Die Violent Deaths, Many Old Men Die Violent Deaths, Many Men Aged 18 to 19 Die Violent Deaths. Murder is nothing like the greatest cause of death of pregnant women. It's so small a percentage, it doesn't even make it into the mortality statistics for pregnant women in America. Headlines like this appear to be about compassion for motherhood. In reality, though, it's a thin disguise for an ideologically driven hate campaign against men. Adolf Hitler said that if you're going to tell a lie, you're less likely to get caught telling a big one. Er hat doch in Hitler mal einen Kampf geschrieben, das Volk ist so dumm, dass man alles mit ihm machen kann. Man muss ihm nur jeden Tag dieselben Parolen vorhalten, positiv und negativ, dann wird es einem Volk. Feminism, which has so much in common with fascism and Nazism, seems to have taken this idea to heart. The journalist who wrote this article is not stupid. The editor who passed it for publication is not stupid. The owner of the newspaper is not stupid. And a producer of Newsnight, who decided to cover the story in Britain, is also not stupid. So how did such a stupid story get published? When highly intelligent people do apparently stupid things, there's almost certainly something we're missing. And this comes to light when you look at the timing of this particular headline. You find that the Violence Against Women Act in the United States was up for renewal. And this concerns no small amount of money. This act is worth over $1 billion to the domestic violence industry in the form of government grants. There are many people and organisations that are dependent on the huge funding that streams from that legislation. Now we can see how the apparently stupid headline actually makes financial sense to those behind it. Strangely, even though four times as many men than women are murdered in the United States, eight times as many men are assaulted, and over 99% of America's military casualties are male, there's no Violence Against Men Act. We rely on programmes like Newsnight to use a critical eye to debunk these scare stories but instead they propagate the myths. Where the hell are we exactly when the news bears so little relation to the truth? On domestic violence websites like Women's Aid and Refuge, they repeat the same factoids that they broadcast elsewhere, only now it's even more poisonous and evil denigration of men. Women's Aid state that What do you think prime cause means? As we'll see from the methods of subcategorizing, prime cause doesn't actually mean anything. Refuge go further and state that. Really? I looked at the Bupa and NHS websites. Both of these medical organizations go on to mention womb abnormalities, a hormonal imbalance, a woman's age, whether she smokes or not, and whether she's previously miscarried. Neither site even mentions domestic violence as a cause of miscarriage, but on Refuge's site, domestic violence is the biggest unborn baby killer. One of the main methods used to amplify the severity of domestic violence committed by men is to subcategorize all of the other things that make an impact. Before we look at this, please bear in mind that there's never been an actual scientific attempt to measure how many miscarriages are caused by men as a result of domestic violence the same way there's no study into how many babies are eaten by their fathers for dinner. The figure of 5% given here is for example only. As we've seen, the fact is that most complications in pregnancy arise due to various medical conditions. However, the aim of organisations like Women's Aid and Refuge is to make out that the majority of miscarriages are caused by abusive husbands and boyfriends. So what happens is this. The medical conditions are artificially split up into all their constituent parts such that if 95% of complications are caused by medical conditions and 5% are caused by domestic violence, they're categorised as follows. We can see that domestic violence at 5% doesn't have the prominence that businesses like Women's Aid and Refuge need in order to push our buttons and generate millions in income. 
and so they keep on subcategorizing the causes until eventually domestic violence becomes a leading cause. This horrible idea is 100% supposition in order to shock people and gain access to their credit cards. With domestic violence, subcategorization is a tool used to enhance anti-male statistics and generate more income. All we know or hear about are the headline figures. Hardly anyone does the research to show it's false, because those people that know it's false, for example charities and the government, have an interest in letting the lie spread. So for example NGOs, uh, non-governmental organisations, very large charities, voluntary organisations, many of whom have very explicit political agendas and bend facts, bend what they're saying uh, to fit, they are never interrogated with the same degree of scepticism because the journalists very often share that agenda. Now that's what worries me. Agencies like Women's Aid and Refuge hoover up the income generated from government and well-meaning ordinary people who donate millions of pounds to them based on these inventive statistics. And when I say millions, I mean hundreds of millions. The NSPCC's full stop campaign, for example, has raised more than £250 million in donations from the public. This is just one campaign from one charity. What do you think the income from the whole nest of them amounts to? These donations cannot be going towards helping legions of abused women, simply because such legions don't exist. So where is all this money going? Uh, they are money going. Where, where is all this money? Jobs. I mean, they, like Women's Refuge now, if you look at all their accounts and all the rest of it, I mean, they've got money there for their pensions and their holidays. And they got, I mean, we was up in West London in their office, well, it was on the embankment, you know. I mean, you, you don't have an office up there unless you've got lots and lots of money. And so, yeah, it's big, but it's business. It, it is a business. And where does all this money come from? Different sources, it, lots, it comes from the government directly to the Federation, from lottery grants, from local grants, from boroughs, giving monies to the, to the refugees. And where does the money go that comes into...? Well, you'll never find out because they're not accountable. An awful lot of it goes into conferencing, which is a, which is a, pro, you know, a way of proselytizing the whole radical feminist policies. It's a proselytizing religion as far as radical feminism is concerned. And what if the baby's born prematurely and then dies due to the mother's drinking? What could she be charged with? What if she has an abortion and the father wants to keep the baby? Can she be charged with murder? There's no link between these 43 women dying in childbirth and any domestic violence from the man. If there was, women's aid wouldn't mince words. They'd be saying, What they're doing instead is to just put this horrible suggestion out there as an unjustified attack on men. It's equivalent to saying... Doctors and midwives in the UK are now officially required to routinely ask pregnant women if they're experiencing domestic violence from their partners. This needless questioning can be counted as one of the success stories of Refuge's campaign of misinformation. These questions cannot be about protecting the unborn child. How can they be if they ignore women as perpetrators? They are purely about targeting men as abusers in order to produce biased statistics. However, much to the annoyance of women's aid, most health service professionals don't bother asking about domestic violence because they know how unlikely it is to occur. All kinds of false information and statistics are flung at you, including blatant untruths about violence in pregnancy in the hope that one of them will cause you to reach for your credit card.